Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here, and in today's video, I'm gonna talk about one of the most unusual and, and fairly little known about species of eagles, and that is the Papuan eagle. Uh, before we jump in, if you could hit subscribe, it really helps to keep this channel up and going, but let's go ahead and jump in and talk about this. Let's talk about this incredible species, the, the Papuan eagle. The Papuan eagle is a very unique and strange species, and it's a species that is painfully difficult to find any information about and any photos about, which is why I'm making this video. I would like this video to be available to people so at least people are aware of the species because people don't know about it. So the Papuan eagle, I grew up in the books that I read, which were written even before my time. This bird was called the New Guinea harpy eagle. And so there was a harpy eagle in my books, but then there was also a New Guinea harpy eagle on the other side of the world. And I was kind of confused by that. Well, later on, people said, oh, you know, it's not really a harpy eagle. Uh, the harpy eagle is in Mexico, Central America, South America, the Papo and eagle, the, the New Guinea harpy eagle is not really a harpy eagle. Well, then they did DNA tests and it turns out it is. So there's a clade with three eagles that kind of form this sister lineage together, which is the true harp eagle, which is the most powerful eagle on the planet with incredible grip force in their feet. And then the uh, Guyana crested eagle, which has basically the same range as a harpy, but it is much smaller and uh, much narrower, uh, but kind of some crossover there. And the Papuan eagle of Papua New Guinea. The Papuan eagle is unique. It's very strange. Most eagles of the world have a situation where they have a lot of different color morphs, where they, they, they hatch, and within six months they're full size, because it takes longer for an eagle, baby eagle to grow. Six months are full size, and then their first year they have a color phase. Then they molt at one year, and they get a new color phase and a new color phase. They have five or six different distinct color phases until they reach their adult coloration. Now, we don't know why this is, but kind of the belief is that's a way to advertise to a mate, hey, I have adult coloration, that means I've survived this long, that means I'm, I'm, I'm a good choice for a mate. I know how to survive, I know how to hunt, I've got good genetics. Uh, we think it's something like that. Um, we're not sure about that, but that's how it seems. Papuan eagles are not like that, they're very subtle. Now, for most people, especially if you're looking through binoculars in the rainforests of Papua, you're probably going to not be able to tell the difference between an adult and a juvenile. It is so hard to find any photos of these birds online. And what I could find, I can't tell a difference. You know, I looked up, there is some slight differences with the barring between adults and juveniles. And there wasn't enough that I could show. This is a juvenile, this is an adult. Don't know why that is. But again, one of the things we also think in the tropics, so many birds of prey, the juveniles look like a juvenile harp eagle. So juvenile harp eagles are very white, and there's tons of other birds of prey. For example, ornate hawk eagles. Ornate hawk eagles, very colorful, vibrant birds. But their first year of life, they almost look identical to a, a juvenile harp eagle. So we think that the, the reasoning in this, and again, genetics just does its thing. It just kind of falls into place. It's not like it's all figured out. But we think that the advantage of this is twofold. Number one, if you look, if you're a baby, but you look like the baby of a bigger species in your coloration, then a predator that might want to hunt you will be like, oh, that's a bigger species that I want to mess with. Also, if you look like a baby of a bigger species, then another predator might see you and be like, oh, that's under the protection of an adult that might be around here. I don't want to mess with that bigger adult. Well, those selective pressures are not in place in Papua. They, the, the, raptor, the range of raptors there is far more limited and there's not a lot of direct competition with the Papuan eagles, kinda, kinda top dog in its area. And so the juveniles and the adults basically look the same. There isn't a huge differentiation. Um, these birds are, are listed as vulnerable. Uh, they, um, there's not very many of them. They have a five foot wingspan, which is not huge and their weight isn't that big either. They weigh 3.5 to 5.3 pounds, you know, with, of course, the males being smaller than the females. This is common with all birds of prey. Uh, now, that is not a large wingspan. It, it may seem big, but if you're working with eagles, it's not big. However, that is 
uh, this is a forest dweller, and we know the, the basic body design of forest dwelling raptors is to have short rounded wings and a very long tail. Short rounded wings, you flap fast and you can dive in and pull without hitting your wing feathers and breaking them, but a longer tail helps you to be more agile. So um, that, 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 that works for them. Their skeletal structure, remember, don't, don't trust feathers. Feathers lie. Uh, feathers will, t if you have a bird that looks like it has a big old poofy head, it's not the case. It's just feathers. You know, you look at the jawline. I always have to tell that with people with bald eagles. People think bald eagles have enormous heads, but they, they don't. Do I have a skull handy? There we go. Here's a skull of <laughs> a bald eagle. Not very big, right? Because in truth, the actual skull, the actual head looks much larger because the feathers on the head and also the neck are all white. So people wrongly assume, oh, that's all the head and there are. No, it's not the case. So don't trust feathers. Uh, trust the skeleton. The skeleton will tell you the true essence of the animal. And the essence of this animal, the closest comparison is a much better known species in the new world is the great black hawk. The great black hawk has a very similar skeletal structure. It has very long lerpy legs. Um, now they are different because uh, a great black hawk has very broad wings and it normally hunts fish. But other than that, the, the skeleton underneath is very similar, almost identical. Having long legs, what advantage does that have for you? We don't know, um, but if you're trying to reach in and grab things through the trees, maybe that gives you that last little bit of effort. But this, this, this is an enigmatic species. Uh, has a very unique call. Listen to the call here. And the call is, again, a little strange. Not quite like any other eagle I've ever heard of. And the species, it's not very large. And again, if you're looking at this bird, you might think, oh, it's a big bird. But again, you compare this to a stinking harpy eagle, a true harpy eagle, they're tiny. Harpy eagles, big female harpy eagles, the biggest recorded weight of a female harpy eagle in captivity, to be fair, so it's probably fat and normal, 27 pounds. And these guys don't top any more than 5.3 pounds. So again, that's even smaller than a male golden eagle. And yet, these guys hunt some incredibly large and dangerous prey. So the food, one of the things they hunt regularly are tree kangaroos, which that's nuts. Tree kangaroos are really cool, interesting taxon where they they're, they're kangaroos that went from the ground to the trees, so they hop up into the trees and they're starting to develop having gripping hands again. Uh, they hunt ring-tailed possums, which are another. Again, these are animals that are powerful and can hang on really well to these branches. They hunt uh, giant naked-tailed rats, which are big, powerful species. They hunt a wide range of marsupials, a lot of different marsupials. They hunt a lot of tropical pigeons and doves, which shows that they have a lot of speed and agility. They hunt hornbills, and I love hornbills. I've raised many species of hornbills, and hornbills can bite hard. They have, so, and they can peck and, and kill with their beak and bite and crunch. They break up, uh, they, 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 they Hornbills will hunt things like snakes and, and lizards and rodents, and they just, they just break the skeleton with their beak and then flip it upside down, break it more, tenderize it, and swallow it whole. So hornbills, that's a, that's a formidable prey to be going after. They hunt cockatoos, which, again, cockatoos. I've, been, I've raised many cockatoos, and if you ever get bit by a cockatoo, they darn near take off your finger. So again, that's a dangerous prey item to go after. They will hunt juvenile cassowaries. Cassowaries are um, among the rat types like ostriches, emus, rheas, kiwis, cassowaries. Uh, cassowaries are known to be the most aggressive. Cassowaries have uh, on their feet their inner toe. The claw is long and straight, and they'll kick and stab you with it. They're highly aggressive. They love to attack people. They're vegetarians, but they're, they're a very aggressive species. So going after a juvenile cassowary when an adult could come and kick you, that's gutsy. Um, they hunt a wide range of snakes and they'll hunt a lot of monitor lizards that, when again, monitors are predatory and big hunters. And they hunt dogs and pigs, domestic dogs and domestic pigs. So this is a comparatively small eagle that's ridiculously gutsy. And, and very few people have worked with them in any capacity. 
and very few people have seen them. Uh, Papua is so remote and hard to access and hard to get into the back country. Uh, there's so much kind of undiscovered country in there. Not a lot of people, not even birders and biologists have seen these. And that's why it, I had to fight tooth and claw to even find any pictures of these to put on here. But I want people to know about the species. So again, the Papuan eagle, very unique, very unusual, but it's a branch off of the harpies. So again, you have the true harp eagle, you have the Guyana crested eagle, and then branching off a little further over here, you have this one, the Papuan eagle, uh, which used to be called the New Guinea harp eagle. Uh, really quite a remarkable species. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning more about this incredible bird. Uh, again, I would love to see a Papua and Eagle in person. I have not had the chance yet, hopefully someday. But I hope you enjoyed learning more about it. And again, if you haven't hit, if you haven't already, if you can hit subscribe, really helps me to keep this channel up and going. And uh, as always, happy hawking.